Hi, and welcome to MKO at Home. My name is Jocelyn Ferrara, and I work as a science operations specialist at the Gemini Observatory. Before I moved here to Hawaii, I was back in Baltimore, Maryland, working at the Space Telescope Science Institute for the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes. All of these are run by a parent company, Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy, or Aura, so it was kind of like a transfer. Now, I know what you're all thinking, Jocelyn, you went from working on Hubble to Gemini? When I poll people if they've heard of each telescope, the response is pretty clear as to who wins the popularity contest. So we have Hubble pictured here on the left and the Gemini telescope on the right. Now Google Trends data does not lie. So you can see here the number of Hubble searches over the past year in blue and Gemini in red. But both ground-based and space-based telescopes have a lot of value. So today I'm gonna to be talking about what some of these differences are and maybe in the meantime, validate my life choices. So one of the biggest constraints that we have to consider on a space telescope is size. So here we can see an artist's representation of the Hubble Space Telescope being deployed from the Space Shuttle Discovery after its launch in 1990. Engineers had to specifically design it to fit into the payload fairing there. So here I have a model that I made of the Hubble Space Telescope um, in its folded up state that it had to be in to get into the space shuttle. So it had deployable antennas and solar arrays made of flexible material that actually unrolled and deployed, kind of like this. It also had a big shutter in the front to protect it and we're open and ready for operations. Yes, this is art, art and science you know, hand in hand. And we can also see here a representation of Hubble's successor, the James Webb Space Telescope. It's all folded up on the left to um, fit into the Ariane 5 rocket. And on the right in its deployed, unfolded, huge state following a very complex process that honestly gives me a little bit of anxiety every time I see a video of how it's supposed to go. So why does size really matter? Well, it puts a limit on the primary mirror size of the telescope. Here we can see a comparison of different primary mirrors of many telescopes around the world and around the Earth. Hubble's primary mirror is 2.4 meters in diameter, shown down here, while Gemini's is 8 meters. The size of this mirror matters greatly as you can consider an analogy of a primary mirror acting like a bucket that collects light. Bigger buckets can hold more light and see much fainter objects in the universe. One other big difference, unfortunately, things do break sometimes. So as you can see from Google Maps, it's just a one hour drive all the way up to the Mauna Kea summit at 14,000 feet from our Hilo office, which is closer to sea level. Of course, with a pause for acclimation at Halepohaku at 9,000 feet. Our incredible day crew typically goes up every single weekday to keep it running smoothly and ready for my team to take over at night for observing. So servicing Hubble, on the other hand, requires sending astronauts into space, which we have done five times. <laughs> Each time took eight to 13 days and cost about half a billion dollars. So the money difference is huge and the time difference as well. Mostly the money difference. Gemini was in the range of about $184 million to build, with Hubble in the range of $5 billion. So with all those servicing missions adding up, plus the adjustment for inflation, Hubble may be close to $10 billion. So let's now pause to remember what incredible science and public engagement our expensive Hubble has provided us. That middle picture was actually taken by Gemini. <laughs> okay, but glorious images aside, you may be wondering why put it in space at all? Well, I can think of two big reasons, efficiency and atmospheric distortion. So Hubble is actually able to achieve about 50% observing efficiency by not being on a fixed point on the ground. 
the amount of nighttime that the telescope has access to is much greater. As long as an object is far enough away from the sun and isn't blocked by the earth, it can be observed. So higher efficiency means more data, which is the ultimate product of these telescopes. So really time is money. And our good old atmosphere that protects us and enables life also bends light that comes through it. This causes stars to twinkle and images to blur. So Hubble being outside the atmosphere in a low Earth orbit about 340 miles above the ground doesn't have to worry about this. But we have some amazing technology developed for ground-based telescopes called adaptive optics, which allows us to correct this distorted light using lasers and super flexible mirrors. It's pretty incredible. And that's how we can go from these blurry images on the left to the ones on the right. Now, there is a new challenge that all observatories are facing, what we call the new space race, as private companies are entering the space industry. This image taken by the dark energy camera on the Blanco telescope was contaminated by bright SpaceX Starlink satellites streaking through the field. Say that five times fast. The Starlink project aims to provide global internet coverage with as many as 12,000 or more satellites placed in a mega constellation at low Earth orbit. And SpaceX isn't the only company with this type of project plan. But hold on, what else was in low Earth orbit? Hubble. Space debris or trash is a rising issue that is going to affect space telescopes if we aren't proactive about deorbiting spacecraft at the end of their mission lifetime. Even within ground-based telescopes, we see many differences. For example, the upcoming Rubin Observatory is going to be conducting a legacy survey of space and time in which it can use its large field of view pictured here to scan the sky and look for transient events that observatories like Gemini up top can collect follow-up data on. Telescopes are built also to be optimized for different wavelengths of light, even on the ground and in space like the Chandra X-ray telescope. So in conclusion, what I'm trying to get at is teamwork makes the dream work. And just like us, telescopes have their own unique strengths and weaknesses. And there is enough space for all of us. Thank you for watching. And please use the hashtag MKO underscore at home on any social media platform for any questions or comments.